Okay, well, welcome back. And what we're going to talk about is in lesson 12.1, sampling distributions of B. Yes, what is B? Well, it depends on what type of B you're referring to. Um, we're talking about two uh, variable data sets. And so some best fit lines, best fit lines, or least square regression lines, how we learned about in unit two, unit two. All right, and so what we have right here is some basic notes on what you need to know about this sampling distribution of B. So just like we have sampling distribution of uh, proportions and means um, and some different categories and whatnot, what we have is sampling, uh, sampling distribution of B, and that's referring to the slope, all right, the slope here. And so uh, what we have right here is we have some values uh, for this, and we call this uh, beta 1, okay? And we have another one, all right, uh, which is known as the parameter. So when you see beta 1 and beta sub 0, that is our y-intercept. Uh, B1 is our statistic, all right? And so and B2 is our other statistic. So when we're talking about this is we have a least square regression line and the true least square regression line where we have the actual true um, slope of, uh, the true, of the true data where we have our y-intercept, our slope, our x, and this is going to be our mean of our y's, okay, our mean of our y's, so our outputs. And so this is our predicted values, and we have that right there. Now we have SD of our residuals, so when we have this, um, this can be our uh, <coughs> uh, 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 data um, right here, and so our SD of our residuals, and so we have this right here, all right, our delta, not our theta, our delta, and so this is our parameter. Okay, a parameter of our residuals, and we have our standard deviation of our residuals, which is known as S. We have our, all right, delta um, or our standard deviation of our slope, so it's delta of B of 1, and we have our standard error, okay, our standard error of our slope, which is known as right here. Now, how do you interpret each one of these values is very important. You might want to write these down. And so we learned about this in unit 2 is a slope. Okay, is that what we find is when each additional x value, all right, whatever we have for our x, our inputs, all right, the predicted y, so the predicted y, and that's what this is, the predicted y, all right, goes up or down by whatever the slope may be, okay, whatever the slope may be. Now, when we have our y-intercept, all right, our y-intercept, our, our beta sub zero, is that when we have our b sub zero, that's when x, when x is zero, our predicted value of y, okay, is going to be equal to that. Now, that may or may not make sense in the context of the problem, but that's what we have for our y-intercept, all right, initial condition. And so now the next thing is, what about our residuals? Well, the actual um, standard deviation, so what is the standard deviation? Well, it actual typically varies, all right, by whatever that amount is, okay, that would be our s value, from the predicted, okay? So the actual typically varies, whatever s is, um, from the predicted values, and that's where the standard deviation of residual is, because standard residuals are actual, all right, minus predicted values. And that's how we get the residuals, all right? And so actually it varies by that, and that's going to be the standard deviation of that. So for the standard deviation of our slope, if we repeat random, random assignments several, several times, so we repeat this random, um, finding random values over and over again uh, many, many times, what we typically get is a slope typically varies by, well, whatever this SE, all right, B1, um, from the true slope. So that is what we get for here. So um, this would be our standard error um, or our other value there. So let's try some of these problems and just check this out. And so let's say Mrs. Barrett's class did a fun experiment using paper helicopters. So that's a fun experiment. After making 70 helicopters using the same template, the students randomly assigned 14 helicopters to each of the top drop heights. Okay, so randomly assigned uh, to these, uh, to each of the five drop heights. So we got 152, 203, 254, 307, and 442. Okay, so after 70 helicopters using the same template, students randomly assigned 14 helicopters to each of the five drop points. Okay, so um, teams of students released 70 helicopters in a random order. Okay, so there is 14 here, 14 here, 14 here, 14 here, and 14 here. All right, in a random order. Uh, and measure the flight times in seconds. The class used computer software to carry out a least squares regression. 
analysis of this data, some outputs and regression analysis is shown below. Okay, so let's talk about this. Uh, what do we got here? Well, first off, you have to know what all this stuff is. So right here, this is our constant, okay, the constant. Um, that constant is referred to as our y-intercept, okay? So that's our y-intercept, and this can be known as our, let's say, b sub 0, okay, b sub 0. Uh, this right here, our drop height, okay, this is going to be our slope, okay? So this right here is our y-intercept, b sub 0. This is b sub 1, and that's going to be our slope, okay? This is our slope. Uh, this right here is our standard error for our slope, okay, standard error for our slope. This is our standard error for our um, residuals, residuals. This is our R squared, all right, our value, and so on and so forth. Okay, so from here, using this information, what is the estimate for B sub zero? Okay, so knowing this, all right, we know that beta sub zero, all right, our estimation um, for that is going to equal all right, approximately, okay, uh, oopsies, Boop. all right, is, well, we're going to say that's maybe going to equal B sub zero, which is going to equal negative 0 0.03761. And so now let's interpret this value. Well, that goes to right here, all right, actually, oops, right there. So when, um, what is our X? So when our height, all right, um, is that zero? So when the height, um, so when the height is zero, is zero, all right, then the predicted value or y sub a is, all right, going to equal this, all right, negative point zero three seven six one. And what is that going to equal? That's going to be in seconds. So we are taking this right here, and we're measuring the flight in seconds, so our output is seconds. All right, it's going to be seconds. So when the height is zero, then y sub it is, is seconds. All right, predicted time is seconds. Predicted time is negative point three seconds, which makes no sense because how could you negative seconds when the height is zero? So now we're going to go to the, what is the estimated b sub zero? Well. This right here, beta of 1, is going to equal b of 1, and that is our slope. And so our slope right there is going to be 0 0.005724. We'll have that. Now, what is that? Well, that one's going to refer to this. So with each, each additional, all right, um, centimeter, because I believe that's going to be in. Centimeters, correct? Yep, centimeters right there. All right, centimeters. Um, the predicted time um, goes, and what do we see here? It is going to be positive, goes up by, all right, 0 0.005724 seconds. And that's what we know. And that's what we have for our slope. Now, what is the estimate for here? All right. Well, that is going to be our standard S. So this is estimate is going to equal this is our statistic. Okay. All right. So that's our, going to be our estimate there. Okay. And our approximation for this one. Okay. So we say approximation. All right. So it's a parameter. I probably should do approximation. All right. So this approximation is going to be our S. And our S is going to be point or point one six eight one eight one and so what is that well that means this uh the actual all right time typically varies by what is it point one six eight one eight one all right from the predicted time. All right, and that's what we have. All right, time in seconds. All right, so it typically varies by, I'm going to put in seconds there, from the predicted time. And that's what we have. Now, finally, what's our standard error? So, standard error of our slope, which is going to be our SE, okay, um, right there. Our standard error 
is going to be right here <clears throat> um, looking at this. And so our standard error is going to be point zero 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 two zero one eight. And what is that interpret value? Well, if we all right repeated repeat um the random assignment uh what is it of uh, 70 helicopters i'll just put helicopters helicopters all right uh many many times many many times all right uh the slope um typically varies by what is that by point zero 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 two zero one eight all right from the true slope all right, and that's what we got there. So I apologize, this is kind of like written kind of uh, poor, uh, but that's what we have there. So that is what we have, all right, for our different values, okay? And this is an example of how we can apply these principles of parameter statistic interpret for a least squares regression line, all right, of the residuals, of the standard error of the slopes, and so on and so forth. We're gonna do another problem similar to this and doing some testing at inter intervals of a best fit line in just a little bit. All right, looking out for the blessing the left.